You know, I almost had to do a double take on this one, folks. Actually, I had to do a double take. Let's get into this interesting article yesterday. I don't know what's going on with this. MLB owners meetings. Las Vegas isn't perfect, but vote on athletics move may be unanimous. So this came out yesterday. We know it was unanimous. Several owners and executives conveyed privately that their patience has simply been exhausted with Oakland government officials and the A's inability to reach a deal for a new stadium. There was a possible deal at Howard Terminal, we know. The price went up. John Fisher didn't want to pay it, so now they are moving to Las Vegas. And this is the interesting part of this article. The A's still have a lease at the Oakland Coliseum through 2024, but it's unknown where the A's will play until their Las Vegas ballpark is ready in 2028. They could play games at Oracle Park in San Francisco, Allegiance Stadium, where the Raiders play. Uh, what? Yeah, that's... So, number one, you the, the, the name of Allegiant is not spelled right. Number two, uh, has this ever been talked about possibly making Allegiant Stadium a multi-purpose stadium? Listen, I'm all for it. And, it, and it reminds me of something. I received an email from someone maybe two or three months ago, and they gave me a nice little depiction. Yes, it looks like left field might be about 150 feet. I'm not sure if those seats, you know, past left field would be movable to possibly create a giant wall, kind of like the Metrodome, but could you imagine them playing at Allegiant Stadium? I don't think the Raiders would be too happy about that. That is their brand new super stadium. I mean, we've seen it with Minnesota Super Stadium and the way they do it, so maybe Allegiant Stadium could do it, but that just seems ridiculous to me. And then you can see the other option would be their AAA ballpark located in Nevada. Everything is on the table. So that's kind of the next step. Actually, you know what the next step should be? It should be finally getting renderings on the new stadium that we still haven't gotten. But it does seem like we're starting to really get into motion. And guys, this is when all the news should start coming out. Everyone thinks, oh, the story's over. The story's over. No, we still need new ballpark renderings. We need to digest those. And we also need to understand where the A's are going to be playing from 2024 to 2027. I think still the most logical outcome is the Oakland Coliseum. Now, originally, Oakland, the city of Oakland, thinking they have leverage, is trying to say, all right, we'll extend your lease, but we need some assurances from MLB that we'll be first on the table if an expansion arises to where, yes, we'll lose a team now, but we're going to get a team in the future. They probably want some type of deal if they want to, you know, help the current A's out and give them the three-year lease extension on the Coliseum. If that doesn't happen, I do still think logically, this seems like it's setting up to be a split scenario where the A's will play most of their home games at the Las Vegas AAA ballpark. Those all have to be night games because that's a ballpark located in Nevada. We know Nevada during the summer, it's ridiculously hot, but you could also have a few weekend series located at Oracle Park, and it's not ideal. It's terrible. There's basically no home field advantage for the A's over the span of what? 2024, 2025, four years. Four years, they could have no home field advantage. I mean, is the Coliseum really much of a home field advantage anyways, especially with, you know, a basically a dead team. Uh, Considering everyone knows they are moving to Las Vegas, there's not going to be any support coming from the Oakland faithful. This upcoming year at the Coliseum, I think is going to be even worse than the last one. You're probably going to have under 25,000 for the home opener, and it's just going to get, you know, certainly worse and worse and worse considering Oakland fans know their team is abandoning them. The, the the owner is abandoning them. Why would you give them money? It just doesn't make sense. And then here's another summary. The owner's vote doesn't address some of the other white elephants in the room. Where will the A's play after 2024? A new ballpark won't open sooner than 2028. But the team's lease at the Coliseum ends after the 2024 season. In the meantime, the A's could share Oracle Park with San Francisco, allowing them to keep their current TV deal, which might be a big deal to them. That might really entice... And that's a terrible scenario, sharing a ballpark with another team, MLB. I know NFL teams do it, Los Angeles teams, the New York teams. 
But when it comes to MLB with all the games going on, the field is just going to get ripped up. The Giants are going to need significant money and significant, like a significant percentage of their gate revenue that the A's make is probably going to end up going to the Giants because that's a lot to sacrifice to have another team play at your home ballpark for four years. If I'm a San Francisco Giants fan, I would not want that at all. And then you can see it also says, or set up shop at Las Vegas ballpark, a huge unknown on the TV rights front. Both poise some, some issues. The Giants may not be thrilled. All right, we'll go over that. And then you can see at the bottom, USA Today says the A's told MLB owners that the team plans to rotate games between Oracle Park, Las Vegas ballpark, and the Coliseum beginning in 2025. So there's no mention of Allegiant Stadium being in the rotation. However, I hope that happens. We need to see Allegiant Stadium hosting baseball. That would be amazing. But it seems like maybe they'll still include the Coliseum. I don't know if the city of Oakland is going to really want to play ball figuratively and literally when it comes to allowing the A's to play their games, even a part of their games there, if Oakland is not getting some type of assurance or, you know, or some type of sweetheart deal to where the MLB says, all right, you'll be first up in terms of expansion. Oakland has their own issues though, actually being able to fund that Howard Terminal proposal. We've know that we know they've tried to get a new stadium really since 2008 and it just hasn't happened. Very similar to the Rays situation in Tampa Bay. And speaking of the Rays situation, I wanted to touch on this. Only one bidder for the new Rays ballpark design gig. I thought this was already decided. I thought the design of the new Rays ballpark, it's the canopy, the teepee, whatever you want to call it. They released a brand new interior photo of it. I'm get, I believe that was like mid-September when they did that. And we were like, oh, this is their new ballpark. But apparently it still hasn't been finalized yet. Listen, if I could say one thing to the Rays, I would say you need a new design. I'm sorry, I don't want to be too harsh. This teepee look, you know, whatever you want to call it, canopy, it's not a good design. It's completely dated. By the time it goes up, you know, think about 2030, 2035, this thing already looks old. It's only going to get worse and worse and worse. And the idea of investing in that area, we've already discussed it. It's just so ridiculous. Now, they think building up an entire district that would be like $6 billion around it is really going to help them in terms of getting foot traffic to the area of St. Petersburg. That's also been a thing people have talked about. Why not just build the ballpark in Tampa and, and, and not St. Petersburg considering the issues? I think either way, the Rays, th this whole scenario is just not going to work out. You can already tell. I mean, you announce this thing and then two weeks later, you draw 19000 for a playoff game. So yes, let's commit to the area for the next, this area for the next 30 or 40 years that just drew under 20000 for back-to-back -back playoff games, and you can't use the excuse, oh, it was it was a weekday. Guys, that's ridiculous. This is the MLB playoffs. If you're drawing 19000 that shows a significant lack of interest in that area when it comes to an MLB team. That's just the reality of the situation. I'm not saying you have to, you know, get 60,000 people there, but you should at least be able to snatch around 30K even for a day game when it comes to the playoffs. And it got really bad for the Rays because they took all their tarps off and you could see all the empty seats exposed and things like that. But maybe this is saying that the design that we have seen that's been rumored, maybe it's not finalized. Maybe they'll go with a different rendering. We can only hope they will actually change it it does seem like a, a decent amount of money to throw into a ballpark, $1.4 billion, especially with the idea to where you're going to have more acres to work with than Las Vegas will. The, the problem with Las Vegas is they're probably going to have to do some type of circular stadium, which can work, but it's very hard to make work. It's, it's kind of an older design, you know, just based on the only nine acres, depending on if that's what ends up being finalized. But the big story, it looks like right now, there's been some rumors that the A's are telling people they will be rotating between multiple stadiums, possibly including the Coliseum. And then how about Allegiant Stadium being in the mix? I highly doubt that. That seems ridiculous. But I would love to see a few series get played at Allegiant Stadium to where we really could see multi-purpose. But again, next year, the A's will still be in the Coliseum. It'll be horrible in terms of attendance. Their team is probably going to be terrible yet again. And I really can't see the A's contending for the next four or five years if this is really the status of their home. If I was, if if I'm a Las Vegas A's fan, 
I would want primarily most of the home games to be played at the AAA ballpark. But again, there is a logistical issue there to where you can really only play night games at that ballpark based on the fact that it is it is Nevada and it is the summer and you pre- like I, I to me it just seems the most logical thing is to cut the Coliseum out completely. There's just no point at the you know the, the Coliseum. None of those Oakland fans are going to want to go support that team and give money to John Fisher. The team is leaving. Why would you go and support it outside of maybe one game or two games? I would say the most logical thing is to play about 75% of your games at the AAA ballpark and then 25% at Oracle Park. And no, playing at Oracle Park is not ideal. It's really bad. But if it's only 25%, you could really alleviate the field stress and not have to be playing games every single day because if they were going to play 100% of their games at Oracle Park, they would be at home. Then they'd go on the road and the Giants would be at home. Then the Giants would go on the road and the A's would be at home. You understand? It's just you're giving the field no time to recover. So if you only play 25% of your games at Oracle, seems like that's a rotation that could work. But either way, this is completely minor league stuff. This is the major leagues, folks. You should have a home. Either way, it doesn't look like it's happening, depending. Or you could just get a situation where the Coliseum says, all right, you know, you can extend your lease. We'll take your money. But at that point, you also have to deal with the fan interest being extremely low considering the team is already leaving. So there's a lot to take in here, guys. We'll have to see what ends up happening. The move is not official official, but it's basically official. It's been basically official since it was announced back in April. You don't announce something like that and then, you know, say, oh, we're just kidding unless John Fisher were to sell the team. And it's, it seems like, you know, he's shown no signs of wanting to sell the team, at least up until this point. But guys, that is going to do it for this video. Make sure you're following me on X. Link to that's always in the description.